In this video, we continue our discussion of error control on the data link layer. We covered CRCs in the previous video, and they enable you to detect transmission errors. Hamming codes enable you to correct transmission errors. The idea behind Hamming codes is to use a parity bit to protect a certain set of bits. And based on which parity codes have changed, you can calculate or determine which bit has changed. So um, it means uh, we will use parity to protect uh, the various sets and let's decide to use even parity. With even parity, I could have used odd parity, it makes no uh, difference whatsoever, but I should just uh, remember what I'm using. The idea is something like the following. If I have a bit, let's say that bit happens to be a 1. If it's received on the other end and it is still a 1, then it means it has been received correctly. If it is flipped, it's become a 0 then uh, it means it's been transmitted uh, incorrectly. So what I want to do now is to add a parity bit to protect, somehow protect that bit. I want to put it in a set um, and uh, it turns out that the only way I can really do this is to put it into two sets and then um, add a parity bit that sits in that set and a parity bit that sits in that set. And if we're using even parity, then it means for that set, the rightmost set, the parity has to be 1, so that we're even. And in the leftmost bit position, we also have to add a 1 to make everything even in that parity set. So if, by way of example, I were to receive something that looked like this, what I would determine is that parity there at the moment in that bigger set is odd. So there's a problem in that set. Uh, parity in that set is also odd, so there's a problem in that set. So the real problem here is in the intersection between these two sets. So that zero is wrong. If zero is wrong, then we know what would have been right is a one, and I can correct it. The mechanism that I'm illustrating here can only correct a single error, a single bit error. We, we have to extend this uh, quite significantly to... Um, uh, uh, correct uh, longer bits or longer sequences of bits or more bit errors. If I have three sets with the two sets I was only to protect one bit. With the three sets I will have a parity bit there, I will have a parity bit there and I will have a parity bit there. Let's call them parity bit 1, 2, and 3 for the time being. So in all of these intersections, I can put bits. There's 1, 2, 3, 4 intersections. Uh, we don't have to number them, but let's number them. D1, D2, D3, and D4. Now what this would mean is, if I check the parity on... P3, and that is fine, and I check the parity on P1, but that is wrong, in other words, it's odd, and I check the parity on P2, and that's also wrong, then what this tells me is that none of the bits in P3 have been affected, they're all fine, uh, and the problem 
is the bit that remains in the intersection where P1 and P2 play a role. So that is only D3. Uh, D2 was also in that intersection, but it's protected by P3. And since P3 was okay, we know that's not the one, and therefore we know it's this one that is sitting in this intersection that is causing the problem. And uh, simply, if it's a 1, it means it should have been a 0. If it's a 0, it means it should have been a 1. What this means is we need some scheme that we can use to indicate the various combinations of sets and intersections between sets. And it turns out that counting in binary is a very easy way of doing this. In our previous example, we used three sets, that's three parity bits, and what we can do then is to write down the numbers that can uh, that consist of three bits and uh, see how we can use that to indicate sets. So the, the first number that we will write down is 0, 0, 1. What this means is I am talking about a bit that is not in that set. Let's call that set A for the time being. It's not in that set, let's call that B for the time being, but it is indeed in set C. Now we already know that the bits that are in only one set would be a parity bit, so we know one would indicate a parity bit. Uh, counting up would take us to one, zero, or one. So this value indicates a bit that sits in set B, but in no intersection. So we again know that that is a parity bit. Continuing counting, 3 will look like that. So that would be a bit that is positioned in the intersection of sets B and C. Next value, counting binary, would be 4. So here we have a parity bit that sits in set A only. That is followed by 101, so that indicates a bit that is positioned in the intersection of A and C, a data bit. So next value would be that, uh, and that indicates a bit that sits in the intersection between sets A and B. So that would be another data bit. And finally, we will have 1, 1, 1. Uh, that clearly is the bit that sits in the intersections of sets A, B, and C, um, and would therefore be a, a parent or rather a data bit. So what you can see is beginning to emerge here is that 1 is a parity bit, 2 is a parity bit, and 4 is a parity bit. On the other hand, that would be a data bit, that would be a data bit, that would be a data bit, and that would be a data bit. What uh, this pattern suggests, that is indeed correct, is that if we write down a sequence of bits, we will be using all the powers of 2. In other words, position 1, position 2, position 4, position 8, position 16, position 32, however far we want to go, as parity bits. And we will have to pack our data bits in what remains. I've written down the various combinations of zeros and ones on the left-hand side of the screen. You will see that I didn't start at 0, 0, 0, 0, as we often do in computing, because what we are doing here, a 1 indicates the set in which an element belongs, and 0, 0, 0 would refer to something that doesn't belong in any set, and there's no such thing. So there's no reason to start with 0, 0, 0, 0. You can also see that I didn't complete my list because I ran out of screen space, but what I've got here is good enough. 
What we're going to do with these values is to take a data bit or data value and it happens to be that byte uh, and we're going to transmit that and going to apply uh, parity bits to it so that if something goes wrong it can be corrected. In order to transmit it we're going to pack it in this um, field that we have at the bottom here. But before we start packing it into that field, we can indicate the parity bits that will be used. And as we've seen previously, the parity bits will be 1, 2, 4, 8, and in principle 16 and 32 and so on if they were here. But uh, they are not, so uh, we don't have to worry about them. Uh, having four parity bits out of 12 bit positions means we have eight data bit positions left. And that's perfect because we want to transmit eight data bits. So what we're going to do now is we're going to copy down our data bits into the non-parity fields, into the data fields. So that zero will go down into that field. The next couple of uh, bits will go down into these fields. One, 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 and then uh, we run into the parity bit, so we have to skip that, and the zero goes into that field, and then we are left with one, zero, one, and uh, it fills out our field perfectly, so hopefully we've copied everything down correctly. Now we have to calculate the parity bits. And remember that parity bit 1 is the bit that checks everything in set 1. And the things that are in set 1 are all of those that have a 1 in this column D. It's a nice easy pattern to follow. You can see it's bits 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, 11, all, all the odd bits. So our parity bit 1 there will cover 3, 5, 7, 9, and 11. We're using even parity. Uh, if we look at these bits, uh, we see a 0, so that keeps parity even. See another 0, that keeps parity even. See a 1, that makes parity odd. See another 1, that makes parity even again. And when we get to our parity bit, we are at even, so we want to keep it even, and therefore the parity bit is a zero. We next have to fill in the values for parity bit two. And the parity, the things that are in set two are the things that are in column C here. And you can see that that's values two and three, those two, also um, six and seven, and also ten and eleven. Uh, if you like patterns, you can see that it's uh, two, and then it skips a couple, and then it's two again, and so on. Very re regular pattern. If we uh, calculate the parity here, on bit 11, we see a 0, so it's even. Then we see a 1, so it's odd. Then we see a 1, so it's even. We see a 1, it's odd. We see a 0, so it's still odd. To make it even, we have to insert another 1, or a 1, into that as a parity bit. Moving on to set B. And in set B, we will be looking at bits 4, 5, 6, and 7. So it's 4, 5, 6, and 7. It's that bunch. And then after that, we will be looking at 12 as well. So starting at 12 here, we see a 1. In other words, we're odd. And then there we are even, odd, even, it means it's fine, we're even. We should insert a zero to keep it even. And then the final group of parity bits, 
that's these ones that are in set A, it starts at A, uh, rather at 8, and everything to the left is included. So, uh, looking at these bits, we see a 1, it's odd, uh, e, still odd, it's back to even, it's still even, to keep it even, the parity bit will be 0. And that is the value that we will transmit. One zero one zero zero one 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 zero zero one zero. Those twelve bits are the ones that are protected. And if they arrive at the other end and you do the parity checks, you will see that it indeed works out as one would have expected. Let's pick a bit and uh, make that a bit uh, incorrect. Let's say uh, bit 5 gets damaged during transmission and it becomes a zero. What the recipient will do uh, when the recipient receives this damaged bit string, the recipient will go and check the parity as we did previously and uh, for set 1, the recipient will say, okay, that's a 0, that's a 0, we're still even, that is a 1, uh, we are odd, that is a 0, we are still odd, that is a 0, we are still odd, that is a 0, we're still odd. So if the recipient wants to fix it, the recipient has to put a 1 in the first parity bit. The second parity bit... Uh, looking at this pair here, uh, we have a 1 and a 0, so we're odd. Then looking at this pair here, we have 1, 1, so that makes it odd yet again. And then looking at this pair, we have a 1, 0, so we're back to even. So there's no problem with the things in set 2. That works out fine. Uh, in order to fix it, I don't have to add uh, another one. Next group to look at was this group that consisted of bit 12 and the range of bits over there. So in position 12, we have a 1, that's odd. And then uh, starting from 7 again, the 1 makes it even, the 1 makes it odd, the uh, zero makes keeps it odd. Um, the zero keeps it odd. Uh, we want it to be even. So uh, if we want to make it even, force it even, then it means we have to uh, uh, put a one into that set. And then the final set, set A. Uh, consisted of these and checking them we have a zero and a zero it's even and a one that makes it odd and a zero that uh, keeps it odd and a one that makes it even and uh, therefore since it is even we add a zero and that just keeps it even now, if you do your conversion of the binary number that we just got, those are your 1s, your 2s, your 4s, and your 8s. So 4 plus 1, that is equal to 5 in uh, decimal. Uh, it tells us that bit 5 is incorrect. We received a 0. If it's incorrect, it should be a 1 and we can correct the error. So now you have seen how Hamming codes are used to correct errors. As we noted, this is uh, just one form of Hamming code. It's one that is able to correct one bit error. You can go and test it and see whether uh, it will work if you, correct, if you change two bits. And in general, the answer is no, it will not work. Another question that people very often have is what happens if a parity bit gets damaged during transmission? And that is something else that you should go and try. 
it's so easy here to think of, to to write down a string of bits, determine the parity bits, then pick any bit, change it, and do the check and see whether you can identify the bit that has changed. This concludes our discussion of error handling on layer 2. And our next topic that we will talk about in the next video is data delineation. See you then.